So coming into a comfortable seat, and I always like to have a cushion or something underneath me to elevate my hips. That just feels better to my knees and my back. So finding a comfortable seat, taking a moment to root down, to really get grounded. You've probably been rushing and running this morning and doing all the morning things. So <sighs> sigh. Just sit for a moment. Something we don't often do is just pause, right? So today is the 4th of May. And if you are a Star Wars freak, today is May the 4th be with you. <laughs> May the 4th be with you. And so I thought it would be fun to theme this class around some advice from Yoda who told Luke Skywalker that he had this golden key. He had the golden key. That's the key to happiness, wealth, success, inner peace, great relationships. And he had that key in him all along. Buddha said the same thing. We go on this search out there for our happiness and we forget that we have that right here. We have the truth. We have the golden key. So I invite you to close your eyes and just take a few deep breaths. And maybe bring to mind, if you will, just something that feels a little off in your life right now, something that seems like a struggle, an effort. Could be something is missing or something is wrong. It could even just be a question, a mystery to you. And as that comes up, I'd like you to just consider the possibility that you actually have the answer within you, the solution, the golden key. All you need to do is slow down and listen. Look inward these deep truths that reside in the core of your being. That's what yoga helps us do, but because our bodies are so agitated, we have to move our bodies in order to get to that quiet place. So if you're already there, go ahead and just lay down in Shavasana and spend the rest of the hour just abiding in that place of inner peace. But if your body is kind of feeling tense and agitated, let's move our bodies. So we're gonna start by squeezing the shoulders up by the ears, and then we'll let them drop with a little bit of force and a loud exhale. <sighs> we'll just do that a few times. Just really, really squeeze and drop. <sighs> One more time, squeeze and drop. And then let your fingertips fall to the floor on either side of you. Slowly roll the left palm up, feeling that up here in the shoulder. Let's inhale, sweep that arm up and over. Reach toward the side of the room, maybe even wiggle your fingers and just yawn into this left side of your body. Those open ribs, that spacious armpit, lat and shoulder. And then return, turn your right palm open, open through your shoulder and then sweep that arm up and over. Reach as if there were a handle there to grab onto and just open this space, right side body. Take deep breaths that stretch your ribs apart from one another. And then move with your breath, inhale up and over. Exhale back to center. So just exploring this space under the skin. Your 
your muscles, your connective tissue, your bones. This amazing miracle that you live in, this place that you call home. It's exactly what you need to give you the experience of your life, this body. And then bring yourself back to center. Walk your fingertips behind you. Come on to the 10 fingertips and press your chest forward. During this whole month, we're gonna be working on some backward bending postures. And another way to say that is back strengthening postures. So today we're gonna to pick apart upward facing dog, which is a kind of a tricky pose that we kind of take for granted. And we'll start right here with this feeling of wrapping shoulder blades deeply onto the back, pressing chest forward and feeling your collarbones lengthen. Just notice when you pause here, how much space there is in front of your body and how frequently we are closed in around this space. Renee Brown says it best, strong back, soft front, wild heart. Go ahead and release to center. We'll bring our legs around and we'll do the opposite now, cat pose. So pressing down into the earth, opening up between your shoulders, tuck your chin and now breathe into that rounded back. Let's start to move both ways. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. So it's gonna give you a chance to check in with your spine. And if you feel any point up and down your spine where there is pain or anything sharp or edgy, I'd like you to make the movement smaller, especially through that part of your back. Make it softer. So this becomes like a love letter to your spine. You're just wrapping it in warmth and softness. No force and no strain. Coming back to neutral, take your knees wide, your big toes touch. Let's stretch ourselves out long, come into child's pose. I always like to get us here early in practice as a reminder that you can come here often, especially once we start putting weight in our hands. This is a nice alternative to downward facing dog. It gives your wrists a break. It gives your body a place to rest. So go ahead and come back to a tabletop position and we're gonna start here building the blocks of Urdhva Mukha. I just drew a blank, Svanasana, <laughs> upward facing dog. So I'd like you to pick up your left knee and you're pressing your toenails and the front of your left ankle down and then switch. So you're kind of marching on the top of your foot, the shoelace side of your foot. When we get into upward facing dog, we'll be lifting our knees this way. We'll be on the tops of our feet rather than tucked like that. Okay, so we need to get the feet and the ankles ready. If you want a little core work this morning, lift both of your knees, press the tops of your feet down, hug your belly in, and you should feel some heat coming on pretty quickly. If that doesn't work for you, keep alternating. And then go ahead and lower your knees if they are lifted. Walk your hands forward, let's tuck the toes. Press back now, stretching the bottoms of the feet. Hips over the heels. Bring those feet nice and loose. And then we'll slowly lift up into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. 
Adho means downward. Urdhva means upward. All right, pedal your heels. Shift and move here. Find the back of your body. Hamstrings, if they're tight, bend your knees more. Lengthen through the spine. And then slowly walk your feet to meet your hands. Let's lift halfway and slowly rise up. Come to extended mountain. All right, we're gonna do the same movement we did earlier in the side body, reaching up and over. Exhale, inhale back to center and exhale over. Your feet can be wider if you need a little more stability today or closer together. So working the sides of the spine and the muscles around the torso. Beautiful. Go ahead and take your arms behind you. And once again, let's find that opening. Let's find that broadening across the collarbones, that squeezing of the shoulder blades. And while we're here, another prep. We're gonna point the left toes back and tuck the toes under so that not like this, but like that toenails down, top of foot down. That should feel pretty awkward. We don't live like that unless you're a ballerina. <laughs> You're not used to being on the dorsal or the top side of your foot. Pull your arms backward, lift your chest. This should feel like a powerful front body extension, spine extension pose, front body stretch. Strong back, soft front. And then release, stand on both feet. Your feet should feel kind of different. Reach high, bow low. Reach high, bow low. Start to find that ujjayi breath, that H sound, that whisper breath. And reaching high, arms come behind, interlace once again. Wrap the shoulder blades onto your back, broaden through the chest, and then the opposite foot reaches back. Come onto the top of that foot. So stretching ligaments and tendons. Actually, we don't want to stretch ligaments and tendons, but just feeling that length in the front of your foot, all the connective tissue. Should feel different, right? Than when we took our toes all the time. Lift the arms a little higher, pull the shoulders back, breathe. and release. Shake out your arms, march your feet a little bit and find your way close to the top of your mat. We're gonna take our first look at upward facing dog and then we'll keep building. So rise high, bow low. Inhale, come up halfway and step back downward facing dog. Let's shift forward into plank pose. And as we do, we're gonna drop our knees to the ground and plant the tops of the feet down. Pause right here for a moment to see if you can feel that. Are your feet comfortable pointing backwards? Spin the elbows inside of the elbows forward and lower halfway down. We're gonna melt our bodies to the ground and lift up into Cobra. And let's take a moment here to make sure the back's nice and warm. So fingertips come off the mat, lift and lower. And once again, we're looking for any pinpoint areas where we feel extra pinching or pain up and down the spine. We wanna avoid those. So let this be a movement of softness, of lubrication. Just really being gentle up and down the spine. And then the hands come back in, come to Cobra. I'd like you to point your toes back and point your toes so hard that your kneecaps come off the ground. 
We're gonna start pressing into our hands. So lifting through the spine, strength in the arms, lift up onto the tops of the feet. So in upward facing dog, sometimes people think that dropping the knees is a modification. That's not true. It's actually hard on the SI joint low back to drop those knees. So I'd like you to keep your legs lifted, pull your chest forward, and then we'll soften back into child's pose. That's a lot when you hold that, right? Tucking the toes, come into downward facing dog. Pedal the heels, shift the weight. Take some deep breaths. And then we'll walk our feet forward. Inhale halfway. Exhale deeper forward fold. And then come halfway and rise high. Extended mountain. Bring your hands to your heart. Awesome. Couple of those scooping breaths. Reach high and bow low. Reach high and bow low. Ujjayi breath. You're just moving that energy around that you've been building. And we'll keep our forward fold. The right foot stays put. Take your left foot back and drop that knee to the ground. Pointing the left toes back. So we're gonna continue the journey up the body. We've been working on the ankle joint. Now we're gonna come into the knee joint and start to stretch through the quadriceps. So we're gonna press into the front of that foot and drop it back down. For a lot of us, this is gonna be new muscle information. This is a different way to move. A lot of folks tuck their back toes in, in a practice. This is giving you something new to work on in here. In your practice. If this is really uncomfortable for you, it's probably normal. I just don't want it to be painful. Let's see if you can tell the difference in your body, discomfort versus pain. Let's come up and hold. So you're pointing your toes back, you're stretching across the shin. It should come all the way up into the quadriceps across the hip flexors heat right when we get into these holds the heat comes up let's lower that knee tuck the back toes and see how much easier it is to come up on your toe that's probably what you're used to step that back foot to meet the front foot forward fold Let's do a few of those sweeping breaths now. Let's just move that energy through the body, lift and lower. Probably feel like you're standing a little bit crooked. My feet are even two different colors. I can see how the circulation is different in the foot that we were on. See if you notice any different colors or textures in your feet. So left foot stays put, right foot goes back, drop your knee. Set up a kneeling lunge. We've got some weight in our hands, so we're just gonna start pointing the toe and lifting that knee. Really great way to strengthen the tiny little bones in our feet. We have 26 bones in each foot. And even your baby toe, your pinky toe, has three tiny bones in it. They're so little. And just moving like this helps us create strength and synergy. Let's come up and hold. So pressing down through that foot, lifting forward through the crown of the head. Feeling the length from your toenails up into your hips. Good, and then release that knee to the ground. Drop your, tuck your toes, the knee comes up again, and then forward fold. 
Let's sweep with breath. Inhale up, exhale down. See if you're a little more even. And then bring your hands to your heart, pause to stand. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit tingly through your legs and your feet. So we're gonna try upward facing dog again and we'll add that last little component. Reach high. Bow low. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. We're gonna drop our knees to the ground and point those toes back. So the feet should be ready for that now. Let's spin the elbows forward, come down into chaturanga and then melt your body to the ground. Shoulders roll up and back and we are in Cobra. So legs together, toes pointing back, kneecaps lifted. I like to slide my hands back another inch. So it's almost like I could tuck my thumbs under my bottom ribs. And from there, we press up. So we've got our ankles stretched, our knees lengthened. Drag your heart forward. You are in upward facing dog. And then tuck your toes down dog. Pedal the heels. <clears throat> Shifting forward, we're gonna drop our knees to the ground. Let's all take the left leg back and we're just gonna do some little leg raises here. So lifting into a pose like upward facing dog, we need a couple of things. We need the strength of the muscle that's doing the lifting and the stretch or the flexibility of the muscle that's doing the resisting or the stretching. So we wanna work a little bit on the strength of the back of the body in order to do these back bending poses. Take the leg high, bend the knee and put footprints on your ceiling. Feeling the strength of your glutes. You can pretend you're in a Jane Fonda video if you want. Doing fire hydrants. And then take that leg straight again, cross over the bottom leg, come to the outside edge of your foot, roll your hips to the left. And you should feel a nice little reward for your work. Nice little stretch. And then switch sides, come back to neutral, core stays strong, extend the right leg. And we're just gonna do little leg raises. So glute strength means better hip extension. And hip flexor length allows for that. Go ahead and lift the leg, bend the knee, put footprints on the ceiling. Nice and strong. Feel the strength. And then the leg straightens and crosses over. We'll come to the outside of that foot. Rotate your hips to the right. And give yourself a nice little stretch here around your right hip. Yummy, little stretch. <sighs> Let yourself breathe and return to center. Let's tuck our toes, lift our hips, and we'll walk toward the top of the mat. Come into a half lift. And as you exhale, grab the backs of your heels, soft knees, pull yourself down into a deeper stretch. Long exhale. Nod your head, make sure there's no tension in your neck. And then press to lift, reach the arms high. Extended mountain. 
hands to heart. Really beautiful, everybody. Okay, we're gonna keep the right foot where it is. Let's step our left foot back and let's take a nice little warrior stance right here. So we're gonna push into the outside edge of that back foot, both feet strong. Your hips don't have to be squared exactly forward. You could be on a little bit of an angle. Make sure your lower back feels safe here. We're gonna play with back bending now, moving up into the spine. So with hands on the hips, lean back just a little bit. Your hips stay stable, your chest lifts, your upper back squeezes in, shoulders squeeze in, and then just come back to neutral. We'll do that two more times. Lift and lengthen, squeeze the upper back, come back to neutral, and squeeze. Come back to neutral. Reach your arms up, come into warrior one all the way up, and then cactus the arms, add the weight of your arms squeezing backwards. Come into that little back bend. As you exhale, neutral, and then hinge over your leg, palms come together. Let's move like that with breath, but really find a back bend, upper back strength. Come back to neutral, hinge from the hips, come forward. So eventually it turns into a smooth movement, but at first be really aware of the muscles you're using to come into this back extension and then move from your hips coming forward. One more time, lift and lengthen, breathe open, fingertips lift high, Exhale, hands to mat, come into downward facing dog and sweep that right leg high. Use the glutes to lift that leg. Shifting forward, we're gonna be on our left foot. So you're in a one-legged plank. Are you ready for this? So press into the mat. The top of the right foot comes down, left foot flips, roll into upward facing dog. Feel the shoulders on your back, belly lifting. Mm. And press back, downward facing dog. Pedal your heels. Woo -woo. Slowly walking forward, press to half lift and rise up. A little bit warm over here, how about you? <laughs> okay, left foot stays put, right foot reaches back. Let's find our warrior stance. Really strong in the outer foot. Hips can be angled a little bit out. Hands on the hips, inhale to your back bend. Shoulders pull back, belly lengthens, and then come back to neutral. The strength in your upper back, middle back, lower back. No strain, no pain, just strength. One more time, come on back. Pretty small movement. Inhale the arms up, warrior one. Good, everybody, cactus your arms. And again, squeeze those shoulder blades together. Find your back bend. No pain, no strain, just strength. Good. And then hands come together, find neutral first, then fold over your leg. Good, inhale, open up and back. Come through neutral, so we're not rounding the spine forward at all. It's neutral to extension, no rounding forward. Just move with your breath. Teaching your body new movement patterns. We're not just going through the motions. One more time. Open, 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 open. Reach high. And then hands to mat. Sweep that left leg up high. A one-legged downward facing dog. The strength of your glutes. Shifting forward. One-legged plank. <laughs> right? And then you're just gonna lower the top of that left foot, point the toes, 
right toes point back and then just let your body arch shoulder blades pull together toes point back lift 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 exhale back Ooh, downward facing dog pedal your heels and come forward into plank pose let's drop our knees to the mat we're going to lift up on to, to stand on our shins if um, this bothers your knees roll something up under them you can also tuck your toes here but since we're practicing up dog this might be better all right we need to give attention to the neck so i'd like you to place your hands on your glutes press your hips down so glutes press down hips push forward belly lengthens shoulder blades wrap onto the back pause right there all right, I'd like you to stay in that shape with your body, but I want you to explore what we would call Pez head. And notice when you drop your head way back there, it's kind of a cheat. Like you think you're in more of a back bend, but you're really just folding your neck, all right? So can you find the place where the neck is in line with the spine? One way to do that is reach a hand back and create space in the back of your neck, no wrinkles no skin wrinkles on the back of your neck and that is your natural neck extension so we want to add that into upward facing dog and not come back like this you want to keep that neck nice and long in line with the spine let's take one arm up and back add a little more length and switch we'll do that two more times eat once each side Lift and lengthen, lift and lengthen, and then widen your knees and come into child's pose. Give yourself a moment here to just process all of that backward action. Deep breaths. Go ahead and come up to a tabletop position. We're gonna do two vinyasa, one on our knees, one on our toes. So shifting forward, kneeling plank, spin the elbows, lower halfway down and pause. And then come to the floor, roll your shoulders, you're in cobra. So coming up from cobra, slide your hands back, point your toes, lift your kneecaps, Every all the pieces in place now. Straighten your arms, hug your shoulders back. The belly button pulls forward and find that place for your neck that doesn't feel crunchy, feels long. And then step into downward facing dog. Ooh, pedal your heels. Second option is getting into that from our toes. I call this float flex and flip. So we're gonna float forward onto our tippy toes. And you actually wanna pull your body forward, get way up on those big toes, flex your elbows, and then just flip to the tops of your feet, pull through from there, the legs never touch the ground. Up dog from there, two ways. And step back, down dog. Deep breath in. Ah. Audible exhale. Let's shift forward, dropping one right knee down to the mat. The foot can pivot off and we're just gonna open into a side plank. It'll probably feel good right now to come onto a fist or fingertips. We're just gonna take that arm over the head and make some circles. Let's find a little bit of looseness and space through the shoulders. I'm working them hard. And hopefully putting these pieces together will help your regular practice a little bit more. Scoop that arm up and around. One more time and then return to center and we'll switch sides. 
So on your left knee, right arm up, you can make a fist and start arm circles here. Shoulder mobility. One more nice big go around and hands on the mat, come back to a tabletop. There's one final little piece I wanna address in upward facing dog and it's triceps because that's the muscle we have to use to get ourselves up into the pose. So the best thing we can do for triceps is yogi push-ups. You are welcome. So shifting forward, lower halfway down and press back up. So that's exactly the action. We never wanna bend the elbows any more than that. So really that's all we're doing is coming to 90 degrees and back up to straight arms. You should really feel that in those triceps. So come to those straight arms. Now just point your toes back, straighten your legs, let your heart pull forward. Wrap the shoulders onto your back. Last time, upward facing dog. And then drop your knees, press back again into child's pose. Ooh. Nice job, everybody. Come up into a tabletop and we'll just do a couple of cat cows before we sit down. Strong back, cow pose, soft front, and then reverse it. Strong front, soft back. You see if there's anything different happening up and down your spine. Is it warmer, looser, stronger? Are there any warning lights on the dashboard? Easy movement. Right here, right now. And let's go ahead and have a seat. So legs extended out in front of us. We've been doing a lot of um, extension in the spine and one way to kind of relieve that is twisting. So we're gonna bend the right knee and clear the flesh out from underneath you. Take the arms out like you are a helicopter and just slowly rotate toward the right. We're gonna go as far as we can and then just take little pulses here little pulses just to see if you can feel your core muscles that are getting you there. And then when you're as far as you can go, set the hand on the knee, the opposite hand behind you, and turn to look over your shoulder. Breathe deeply here. Ringing out the spine after all of that work, that effort to extend. And let the latches go, come back to your helicopter arms, turn the palms up, reach up high, take a deep breath in, and then hinge from your hips, come forward with a flat back, a straight back first. If you have any back pain or injury, this is a great place to stay. Just keep your spine on an angle, neutral. You could use a strap or grab your foot. If you, um, Feel like your spine is pretty healthy and happy today then go ahead and round over your leg come forward to counter all the back bending we've been doing and breathe breathe into your full body like a wave head to toe breath
and ease yourself back to sitting. We'll just switch legs. Left leg is straight, right knee is, sorry, right leg is st straight, left knee is bent. Arms open into that helicopter and you're just gonna twist to your left side and do those little pulses. Let your core muscles do all the work and when you've come as far as you can go, set the hands. The last thing to happen is the neck turns to look over the shoulder. Breathe deeply, sit tall, wind up on the exhale. One more breath in and out. Coming back to center, helicopter arms bring you home. Turn the palms up, reach high, and then bow forward. And you can just pause if you like to just see what your spine needs here. A straight spine, you're getting a great hamstring stretch. If you'd like to bring that stretch up into the back, go ahead and fold over the leg. So always listening to the whispers of the body. Coming back up through that flat back. Let's extend both legs out in front of us and we're just gonna give them a little, little pound out, a little shake, a little massage. And then scooting closer to the end of your mat, grab the backs of your knees, lift and lengthen. Come up with your chest, come up with your back waistband and let's come into boat pose. Boat pose is another great way to create core strength that helps us in those backward bending postures. Just wrap that tight belt around you and breathe. String is pulling you up through the crown of your head. One more in and out breath. And then lower the heels, sit tall and slowly roll yourself down onto your back. Arms wide, feet touching the edges of your mat. Let's windshield wiper the knees. Just rolling across your sacrum, feeling a release in the low back. Drop the knees to the left and turn your head to the right. an easy twist that also allows for a stretch in the inner thigh and the outer leg. Keep filling your body up with breath and emptying completely out. Moving back to center, switch your knees over to the right and turn your head over to the left. Just receiving here oxygen, rest, healing. You have all the tools within you to heal, to be at peace, to know joy. Sometimes it's taking off layers of who we are not in order to see these gifts, these tools that are right here. And sometimes we're covered with a lot of layers. Let's come back to center. We're gonna come into bridge pose. And if you have a block that you'd like to place under your hips, you're welcome to support your bridge. 
Otherwise, feet press down, hips lift up. I like to bring the arms underneath, another way to strengthen that upper back. And here, strong back. Can you feel as you press into your feet, feel your hamstrings, your glutes, all the muscles of your back working. Strong back. Creating a soft front, an open heart, a graciousness with the way you look forward. Beating in your chest, this wild heart. You release as you're ready. Move your shoulder blades out of the way. Draw your knees slowly in and give yourself a nice hug here. Massaging again the low back side to side. You can feel your hips rocking side to side. Can you also feel your waist, your kidneys? Roll across the space where your liver resides, just below your ribs. Move around. On your next inhale, knees pull away, arms straighten, get a nice big arm stretch. Exhale, squeeze the knees in tight. Inhale, lengthen away. Exhale, draw in. Inhale, lengthen one more time. And squeeze. Let your feet feel the mat all the way out to the corners of your mat. And once they get there, flop your feet open a few times, just in and out, just wiggle your ankles. And then adjust your hips, move side to side so that both of your glutes feel even on your mat. Wiggle your shoulders, both shoulder blades even. Turn up your palms. See if you can make both of your arms feel the same. Turn your head side to side until you find that exact point where your head rests most easily. Eyes closed or settled softly on one point. And now your back is held by the earth, Mother Earth holding you here with gravity. Allow yourself to feel the strength that is holding you. And the soft front open above you. Taking slow, deep breaths here.
May you lean into the change and cycle you are currently going through or being called towards. May you find the courage to trust yourself and shout yes to the burn of transformation. May you let go of all the no longer essential parts of yourself and ignore their fading, fear-filled voices. Because this is where you cross the river. This is where you stop being the scared person you once were. This is where you shoot out of the cracks you've fallen into. This is where the waiting ends and a new voice is birthed. A voice you recognize as your own, yet new. May you lean in. As you take deeper breaths, my friends, begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Coming into a new moment with a golden key, with awareness that you can unlock the very next moment in exactly the way you desire. Start to stretch your body out long and breathe deeply as you bring yourself back to a seat. We'll bring our hands together at heart center in a gesture of gratitude. Acknowledging ourselves for the effort we made to show up to our mats, to become stronger inside and out, to gain new awareness. May we leave today remembering that there's so much in the world that we cannot control, but what we can control is this little space, three feet around us. And in this moment, my friends here on this screen, three feet from me, we have made a difference in each other's lives today. So I thank you for that. May you all lean in and step into this day with a strong back and a soft front. And may the fourth be with you. Namaste. Namaste.